So guys, that's my situation at the moment, pretty shitty. But um, that was the last time I went out. Um, I had a little bit of a later start that morning and on my way out, I actually ran into John Costello and he uh, said, just be careful because the bar is so shallow, like Corumbin's ridiculous at the moment. Um, and it was, but I managed to get out all right, it was fine. And then I was planning to be in before the dead low um, and I was trawling around Palmy, pulled in my dead bait and I had a big chop out of the slimy. 100% would have been a Spanish or a who, and famous last words, I uh, put another one on and trawled around for a little bit, didn't get anything, ended up coming through on the dead low, and you can see in that video how shallow it was, like I literally had to get off the ski, and I was walking the ski over, because the tide was running out, so I had to have the engine on to get anywhere, and sucked up a whole lot of sand, and uh, yeah, I, as soon as I got back on it and got into deeper water, the uh, warning alarm was going off, and it didn't stop all the way back to the ramp. So um, took it into the shop and it's uh, in the shop now. Unfortunately, it couldn't just be um, flushed through. So they've taken the whole engine apart. I'll put up some pictures now. You can see the sand all through. Um, and there was a whole lot of sand through the cooling system. So that's why the alarm was going off because there wasn't water getting around there. So um, he put it back together, he got that all clean, put it back together, and then when he's put it back together, the compression's all out. So now I have to get the whole uh, cylinder head machined. So yeah, it's turned up to be quite a big job um, and a few grand later. So, and I'm without a ski now for the second week, which is pretty shitty. So uh, yeah, we got to do these things and it is what it is, but I'm uh, doing it tough without a ski at the moment. So seeing as I'm running a little bit low on content and um, there's probably none coming for a little while. I thought it was a good opportunity to sort of take you back through a few of the good catches from this season and uh, talk you through them in my headspace and all of that at the time. So yeah, we'll recap a few sessions and uh, yeah, keep you guys entertained for a little while until I'm back on the water. Nothing says it's the start of mackerel season like chasing spotties at Palmy. Get out there with a thousand other boats and start throwing some sinkers at people. It's good fun. I'm not a big fan of trawling dead baits. I don't do so too often. Um, generally, I do so at the beginning of the season just to cover ground. I did this morning. Um, I think this was December 27th. For some reason, that rings a bell. I was trawling a slimy and a pilly. And pretty much the pilly banged off straight away. Um, it ended up being a good size spotty. Um, pretty typical spotty fight though. Had a lot of gas at the beginning. And as the fight went on, it didn't really have too much to offer. Uh, but yeah, I gaffed that first spotty, and that was my first mackerel for the season. So I was absolutely stoked with that. I was over the moon. Um, and to start the season in uh, such a way where you've got a really good size spotty like that, you know, you have to be happy with that. Um, unfortunately, when you start encountering the bigger size spotties, and that becomes the mean, I have heard things that indicate that is the end, or, you know, coming towards the end of a species, and we've seen that with uh, other animals, so hopefully that's not the case, but we'll keep enjoying the big spotties while we can. Stop for a quick chat on the reef in the morning, there's always a few boys out there, uh, especially at that time of the season. Um, this morning went really quiet, so my go-to when things go quiet is to get some larvies and put them down, um, and pretty much did that to a tee this morning. Hey, 
that thing ran boy i thought i was on to the first spanish of the season um unfortunately not to be it ended up being a spanish size body i guess uh, but again, I was pretty happy with that. Ended up with two really good size bodies that session. Um, and that was pretty much, I'm pretty sure, would have been my biggest body to date. That thing was thick, um, which is really cool. And yeah, strong, strong fish. So very, very happy with that to start the season off. This session was something else, say. Eh? Like, when I sit back now and think about it, you know, there's good and bad memories from it. You know, it was eerie, but it was awesome. Um, and there's, you know, definite memories that stick with me now, particularly when we've had, you know, an incident like we've had where, unfortunately, we've had a fatal shark attack in that area. You know, going out on dark and traveling a fair way, you know, out to the reef that I was fishing. You know, when I think about it now, it's a little bit stupid, but at the time, you sort of just get caught up in the moment and... I got a call from Consta earlier that day and Consta had been out and said that the mackerel were biting and they absolutely were. Um, but you know, you just get caught up in that moment and uh, you don't really think about all the possibilities. Whereas now when something like this happens, you become a little bit more risk averse and you really start to consider, you know, all the other possibilities that could happen when you're out there. So, you know, this was a, an afternoon that wasn't particularly nice. Um, you know, that was white capping, it was a pumping northerly. I think it was about 20, 25 kilometers, if not 30. Um, the GoPro doesn't really do it justice, but it was horrible out there. And I mean, the way that the wind and the water was hitting the reef, you know, it was a pumping northerly, it was a low tide, and there were a lot of pressure points on that reef. And, uh, you know, I've commented, you know, and I've told a few guys when I came back, you know, there were literal whirlpools on the pressure points on the reef. And I mean, that's pretty scary to think about, you know, if something happened to the ski, and also now that, you know, something has happened to my ski, and, you know, you don't have, 100% reliability in it and you realize things can go wrong you know it does make you question things a little bit more so, but anyway enough of the sob story I did fish it um, I was high speed trawling lures around and it hit a time in the afternoon where there was nothing happening nothing happening and then Jesus just went on hey. so I was trawling I hooked up probably about four or five times um, well not hooked up but the lures were swiped at and uh, they took a little run and then dropped them and it took a fair few goes before I actually hooked up properly. And when I did hook up, it doubled up. So that was sick, that was good fun. Oh, it doubled up. So just my luck, it doubled up. And what happened, and now I can obviously figure it out, but at the time I didn't know what the hell was going on there. But now I can see that the lure that was closer in, which was on the overhead, that was hit by a bigger fish. So the bigger fish had actually hit the lure and it's run over the smaller fish, which is on the spin reel, which I'm fighting now. Um, and obviously, given that it's braid, the, oh God, the fish off. on my reel ran, and Shit. as soon as it's run, it sliced straight through the mono on the other line. So unfortunately, I dropped the, the bigger fish of the two, and I knew it was a bigger fish because of the way it ran on the overhead. Like, you could hear that reel screaming. But also, this fish was mad. Like, it had the biggest head shakes, and it was a very erratic fish. fish that um, like it was that, sort of so darting all over. So, um, yeah, I mean, you always learn something new every time you fight uh, Spanish. But um, I knew this was Spanish straight away. Like, there was, there was no question in my mind that it was Spanish. Um, just the way it was fighting. It wasn't a massive one, but it was a really, really good Spanish to start the season with. Good run there. Um, yeah, really good Spanish to start that season. I need to force it. I remember laughing about this at the time, but I mean, now when I look back on the videos, it's not that funny because I could have very easily had a chopped up hand or a treble in the hand. And I mean, when you're out at sea with a treble in your right hand, I don't know how I would have got back to the ramp. But um, yeah, I mean, at the beginning of the season, you sort of fall out of routine with the way that you normally do stuff in. Whereas, you know, now towards the end of a season, I'm pretty well uh, tasked with what happens when I get a fish. So, I to get back to the ramp. So, um, I'm not going to risk it out here, it's a, uh, a little bit sketchy, but... Um, if you've ever been the only one out there, off that spot I on dark, you'll know what I mean. Jeez. I usually wait a little bit later in the season to start fishing the seaway. I think this oh, was about Jesus. late Feb, early March. I remember dropping down and I could only ever get full strings of very small yakkas. 
Um, so I moved off to a spot I know that holds slimies um, and generally bigger yakas and I ended up getting straight onto a, a bigger yakka which I was stoked about. Um, but I had a big learning curve here this morning and you'll see what I mean. Um, but I was quite annoyed I nearly lost the one big yakka I had in the process. Um, but I was quite annoyed that I couldn't get uh, proper size yakas, I could only size, get very very small ones so decent and size, you can see the different right. size there. So I had the smaller one out already. But as I was rigging this bigger yakka out, the smaller one just went bad. Oh shit. Oh Jesus. Here we go boys! I didn't know at the time but this was uh, my biggest Spanish for the season. Well cross fingers it's not my last um, and hopefully not my biggest but uh, to date it is or was the biggest Spanish for the season. Um, straight away I knew it was a Spanish again no questions asked. Initially it was really strong, very quick, uh, very indicative of a Spanish but then as the fight sort of went on um, I lost hope thinking it was a really big fish just because of the way it was acting it was quite sluggish towards the end and didn't really put up too much of a fight but I remember coming home and taking a picture of it of the hookup and the way it was hooked up it actually had a treble in the top and the bottom jaw so it probably couldn't open its mouth during the fight and that's why it just sort of exhausted itself pretty quick because it, it wasn't getting water through its gills so it sort of just came in and it was very easy to handle but I mean Spanish of this size generally fight you know pretty tough right to the end and uh, you know they're generally a bit of a handful yeah, so sweeper. this one wasn't too bad to deal with <laughs> yeah boy fight that's my good first first proper spanner of the season woohoo fuck that's a good fish hey. yes that's a donkey that is a fucking donkey boys Wow we Wow we boys Woohoo How good is that boy So I'm obviously pretty stoked, I'm not sure if you can pick that up in the video. Um, but I only generally get, you know, one or two big Spanish a season and I was stoked to tick this one off fairly early in the season. Um, it's annoying because when I took this video it sort of bent back in on itself and because of the stripes you couldn't really tell that it was bending. So it just looked really short and really fat. But anyway, that's uh, a social media problem. This is the start of the Who season. So this every single session I would have around this time of year, so this would be what, uh, mid-March, late March, probably early April, um, every single session I would start with the Who Patrol and I'd trawl high speed lures around, I'd find a bait school, um, I'd work that bait so school and if nothing was happening on it, I'd drop down and get a larvae like off of it. Absolute. And then pretty much rig that larvae up, put it back down on the bait school and um, yeah, I'll come up with something. So that technique worked really well. I think I got about two or three small decent sized Spanish um, that way and one really big spotty that way. Um, and again, it makes sense because if the bait school's there, you know, there's going to be predators on it. That's going to come up tight with the Spanish or who absolutely. So you'll see in a lot of my videos when I have larvies out the back, I'm spinning as well. Um, the reasons for that are twofold. Obviously, one, you could hook up as you're trawling There's along. No but two, and this is the more important reason, I you find that when I'm spinning, around, it generally like will attract it. fish and bring them to within eyesight no, of my larvies. And you'll fish. often find within the first oh. 20, 30 casts of actually spinning, you'll hook up on the larvae just because I think that you're getting fish to come in from outside the sort of boundary of where they can see your larvies so that's a, a really good trick that I've learned um, and yeah it obviously works so definitely try it out next time and see what, what happens I told you told you it was gonna go Given the size of the larvae I had out, I had a, a few higher hopes than what I ended up with. But um, yeah, again, in this sort of stage of the year, you have to be happy with any sort of Spanish. This was just before it went really, really quiet on the Gold Coast. Um, so we didn't obviously know what was to come. But looking back now, obviously very happy with that. But yeah, given the size of the larvae, I thought it was going to be a lot bigger of a fish that hit it. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, like that huge Spanish hit a very small larvae. This small Spanish hits a really big larvae. You just never know what's going on in the fishing world. 
you knew it was coming, you knew the hoover it had to be in here, and here we go. So this morning started off like any other morning, um, started with the high speed hoover patrol. I had the lures in for about, geez, probably about five minutes, hadn't covered much ground at all. Um, and I was just making sure that the lures were working properly. I mean, at this speed, a lot of the lures jump out and don't really work too properly if they aren't fine tuned. And I was trawling along, trawling along, nothing happened on the sounder, pretty normal morning. Um, look back at the skirts on my left hand side here and it made a funny jump and you know I kept an eye on it and I actually turned around to get a bit more comfortable when I was having a look at it and bang look at that rod going so what happens there is that the who hit it and they literally just sit in the water thrashing their head um, side to side and I mean it did like a very erratic movement but um, yeah it's super cool nonetheless but I was stoked at this point. Like, I didn't know what it was. Like, I had hopes that it was a who, but I knew it was big. Like, I knew it was either a big Spanish or a who, just the way it was acting. That is a big fish. Boom, pick up the rod. Big head shake straight away. Good sign. Mac Tuna definitely don't do that, so that's a great sign. And, yeah, I started putting a little bit of pressure on it wasn't really acting up here much at all it was sort of just coming with me and um i turned towards it on the ski and i started you know heading towards the fish a little bit and as i was sort of heading towards it like this is an awesome shot but as i was heading towards it it um started sort of running along sideways i got a few head shakes and then this oh my goodness oh my goodness, that is a who! That is a who! It's a who! You're kidding. I was going off at this point because I knew it was a who. Um, a and I mean, to oh feel the power goodness. and speed of a fish like that when you have a rod in your hand is just like next level. Like, I literally thought that rod was going to get ripped out of my hand. I thought the bearings were going to give way or... I mean, I've never heard that a real scream like that or take that much pressure nice. from a fish in my life. So I was just expecting something to happen that was going to um, end with that fish getting off. But luckily, you know, the drag settings were right, everything was right. Um, and then it ended up doing it again here when I leant over to get the gaff. And that's drag. You're kidding. You're kidding, bro. <laughs> It's on a uh, double hook rig, so hopefully it's good, it was well hooked. So the funny thing about that was it wasn't a good hookup at all. And I only found that out later on when I tried to make a jaw mount out of the hoo head. Because obviously I stripped all the skin back and that was a horrific experience and my house smelled like human flesh for a week. But when I stripped all the skin back, I saw that... The initial hookup was through the bone, and one was through the top jaw, one was through the lower jaw, so a fantastic hookup initially. But within this video, and I think it might be the next clip, um, when I'm sort of pulling it up, you can see the rod jerks twice, and it's funny because at the time I mentioned that it feels like the hooks are pulling out, and that's exactly what would have happened. So I would have been millimeters away from losing this fish, but luckily, it obviously de-hooked and then re-hooked just in the skin just because initially, I mean, when I got the fish in, um, I realized that it was just hooked in the skin of the bottom jaw. And obviously later I found out that, oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, dude. Every time it shakes its head, it feels like the hook's pull. Yeah, stressful. So I was so close to losing that fish and yeah, I only realized that later. Yeah, there it is at 10 meters. Jesus, it looks like a whole school sitting with it. Oh, man. Come on. When you've been chasing a fish for yeah, as long as is. I've been chasing who Dude, and you eventually look down and see it on the end of your line like there's just a feeling of such elation um, you know and you're so happy that you've actually got one on your line and your eyes sort of don't believe you for a minute um, but you know it, it's, it's a pretty cool experience and here yeah, this what happened here was really cool as well so I mean as I'm bringing it in the sort of water glasses out 
right over the hearing allows me to get a really cool clip of it coming in and then bang land the gaff shot well placed gaff shot but didn't it sort of hit the pectoral fin and didn't go in so i had to ungaff it and regaff it and there we go got a good gaff shot that time around and then obviously you can start to celebrate a little bit that is a slob of a hoo dude she's barely got started this morning and uh that's a 1.5 meter bag boys look at that thing Obviously, you have to get it up on the ground, boys. Chuck me a follow, Scott Wills 92. All right, get back into it. This was when I started to sort of understand, you know, the strength and the power and the speed of these fish. When I started looking at the rig and realized how buckled it was, on that top hook, there should have been a whole heat shrink across it, and that was gone. Um, then I started to look at the swivel, and the whole snap swivel was stretched and totally buckled. Um, so when the fish ran the head of the skirt went straight over the snap swivel and totally like crimped it all up so i was lucky i actually didn't get a fish on that again because it probably wouldn't have got it in but this is a sick shot of the who all lit up all th like real thick look at the girth on that thing that's a sick shot i love that one So there you go guys, a few fun sessions from this season so far. Um, hopefully it's not the end of the mackerel. I, I know they're still there. Um, so it's just a matter of getting the ski back and hopefully getting into them. But um, yeah, and then after that, I'll officially have to change over to winter. So I've been chatting to a few of the boys. Thanks, Will. Um, Will Kitchen has been giving me a few tips on uh, chasing snapper. I've never really done much of that before, so that'll be fun. And um, yeah, hopefully I get a few videos out for you guys fairly soon. But other than that, I hope everyone's well and um, hopefully you're not dealing with ski dramas like I am. Yeah, we'll uh, see you soon and hopefully you get into some fish on the next vid. See you guys.